Calde sensitive hashing. What is it and how does it work? So Calde sensitive hashing is a technique that for similar inputs, it would, with high probability, create outputs that fall in the same bucket. Unlike traditional hashing, where we aim to minimize hashing collisions, for locality sensitive hashing, we actually strive to maximize collisions for similar items. So a simple hashing example. We have a traditional hash function with a series of different keys. We may output it to several different values bounded in a finite sense, but these values can be fairly scattered and it's non-uniform. The one and the two, despite being closed keys, can map to completely different values. Meanwhile, in locality sensitive hashing, similar keys will map to similar values. So we may get something like this. The key is that we try to group similar values together in locality sensitive hash functions. So some further applications. Traditional hash, you may see it in checksums. You may see it in password hashing. It's critical in password hashing that the values are more sparse because if I'm close to guessing someone's password, I don't want to see that the hash code is very close or potentially colliding with it. We want to get completely different hash passwords. Similarly for hash tables as well. Some other possible functions include Adler32 and MD5. For locality sensitive hashing, it may be used for dimensionality reduction. It can also be used for nearest neighbor search. I made a dedicated video just on nearest neighbor search and min hashing as well. So some possible functions include bit sampling and minwise independent permutations. I also included the formal definition as well. If you're interested, you can pause the video and look through this formal definition. So I'll briefly cover very briefly three techniques, bitwise sampling, min hashing, and sim hash. Bitwise sampling is a very simple technique that just simply samples a particular bit at random from a binary string. So let's consider the example of ABC. We have three binary strings here. We may consider just randomly the second bit. So in this case for A, we have 0 and 1, so 1 is the second bit. For B, we have 0 and 0, so that will be the 0 bit. And C, we have 1 and 1, so again we have 1. So A equals 1, B equals 0, C equals 1. We clearly see that it's not a very particularly powerful technique, but it is locally sensitive hashing. Because if I have a binary string with the same position, same hash value, 1, between A and C, we see that for that specific dimension or index of the binary string, both values are identical. So in essence, we are following the definition of locality sensitive hashing in this sense. Meanwhile, min hashing is a more complex technique that leverages permutations of strings in a binary string and then aims to identify the first value in the string that is one. So let's actually go through an example right here because that's probably very confusing. So we have the permutations on the left-hand side, which are the skinny columns, the red, the yellow, and the blue. And then we have the documents C1, C2, C3, C4. I actually have a dedicated video on all of this if you're interested. So, we start off with the 1. We look at the 1 permutation, which is the very first item in the red shuffle. We see that it's 0. So we continue until we get to a 1. So the 2 and the 1, the second item, and we denote it in our signature matrix, which is on the right side. So the columns are the different documents, and on the rows, we have the different permutations. So it's the second item. Same here. We check 1 and 0 for the yellow permutation, 2 and 1, and then we denote it with 2. Similar for the blue, we repeat the same process. Now we just did the very first document, we continue creating the signature matrix for the second document as well. After you create the signature matrix, this essentially takes all of the different feature vectors that we have for the different documents, which could be a huge, huge size, and compresses it into this simple matrix. And what the simple matrix does is then you could use a different technique and apply locality sensitive hashing on it, and it's actually an extremely efficient way to compute intersection of sets, and more specifically finding um, the closest and identical or nearly identical documents. So again, I have a dedicated video on this if you're interested, but this is just the main idea of using permutations for min hashing. Simhash is another one. So this is a Google patented technique for rapidly identifying near identical documents. So unlike min hash, it's more suitable for finding near identical. So unlike clustering, which is more for closely related documents. So min hash is more appropriate used also for documents that are kind of similar, but not necessarily nearly identical. While simhash is more strict in terms of these are the constraints for which I will accept a to, or detect that two documents are identical. It's more performant than minhash and it's used by Google for duplicate detection in web crawling and also federated learning of cohorts and ads. So the process is you just generate the simhash, which is the first step. That's a 64-bit sequence generated from a set of features. So for a specific document, you might get a set of features. And then for each index, you basically determine which one's the dominant index. So the first index might be one. So in that case, you would check to see uh, in the first index, do I see more 1s or do I see more zeros? So then for each document, you get a 64-bit sequence of numbers. Each document is like that, so you just have 64 bits. And now I want to figure out which one's close to that 64 bits. So in order to do that, then I have to solve the Hamming distance problem, which is given a set of like 1 billion 64-bit sequences of bits, how do I figure out which one's close to it? So it turns out there's multiple different approaches to that, and that is a well-known problem in computer science as well. 
So for future reading, I have listed some additional documents over here. If you're interested, thank you very much for watching.